Hi, this is Dale at DLMR Trailer Sales, and we do a lot of major service repair on horse trailers and just about any type of trailer. I have a lot of customers who always say they want an all-aluminum trailer. Well, what I have here is I have a 1998 Featherlight stock trailer. It is 20 foot on the belly, and there is a major frame problem, and what it is is the steel. It's not the aluminum. What I try to tell everybody is underneath the trailer, your gooseneck structure is all steel. And then underneath, if you look, you can see the superstructure of the gooseneck is all steel. And then they either huck fasten it into the body of the trailer or nut and bolt it. Well, underneath this trailer, there is a whole superstructure that holds your axles. And I'm going to tell you what, there's only one manufacturer out there that I've seen that bolts their axles directly to the aluminum. And in my opinion, that's a big no-no. Every other manufacturer makes a subframe. The axles are attached to it. So in a little bit here, we're going to drop this subframe out. And after I drop it out and get it on the floor, we're going to show you what a subframe looks like and what occurs as time goes by. All right, we've got the subframe out of the trailer, and this is basically what the trailer looks like at the factory without a subframe in it. So basically what they do here is they build the whole shell, framing and all, and interlink it. On this trailer, what has occurred is, if you look, here's what a subframe looks like. Now, not all subframes are built the same way, and what you can see on this one is it actually is fractured right in half. And what a lot of manufacturers used to do, and I'm finding that they're not doing it, they put this vapor barrier in to prevent the steel from touching the aluminum. And the reason they do that is when you put steel and aluminum together, it tends to have an electrolysis, which causes the aluminum to corrode out a lot faster. But here's one of the places they don't put the vapor barrier in. They have these little brackets here that are welded to the trailer that are steel. Then they bolt these cross members, which are aluminum, right to the subframe. And what we find is right around these bolts is where they oxidize and actually break off the subframe. And then you have to go ahead and pull these out and build plates to reinforce it. Now this is welded right to the bottom of the trailer for the floor because the aluminum floor goes across the top. This one here is actually the way they've designed it, and I don't know why they did it this way. They wanted a lower profile to keep it low to the ground, and instead of leaving the subframe intact, they actually notched it and put the axles up inside the subframe, and that's what's caused it to crack. You basically only had here about an inch of subframing, and then they were relying on the axle of the trailer plate to hold this and that's what's caused the break. And when this actually broke, what it did is the subframe is actually bolted in to the aluminum. Now this one is backed up with a half inch plate. And if you see, it's, this is just a fender and that's a crack. But what happened was on the back here, where this subframe's attached, it actually worked and tore its whole framing of the aluminum right out of the trailer because that's where the subframe was attached and when it broke it just sat there and worked its way and actually tore that out. So we're going to have to weld a whole new plate in there. So one of the things that when you do have an all aluminum trailer and it is being inspected, make sure that the bolts that hold the subframe in place aren't oxidized and cracked around there. And What also happens is the aluminum and steel when it starts to oxidize, the aluminum actually has a, a hydraulic and it'll actually push the aluminum away from the subframe bolts that hold it onto the trailer and it'll actually crack. And I've actually seen whole trailers, they put reinforcement plates in and when it does that, it actually cracks the aluminum and basically the trailer ends up to being scrapped. So I don't care what trailer you buy, 99% of those all aluminum trailers will have this subframe in place to hold the axles into place. If it doesn't, you damn well better look real close at how they're attaching those axles to that aluminum body. So what we'll do is I'm going to go ahead and have to build a whole new subframe and once I get that done, we'll take a picture and show you what that looks like and explain how we made it. Okay, a lot dirtier.
and it's near the end of the day. This is what we took out of the trailer. And you can see how it's all busted up right here, like I had showed you before. And it's bent. And what we've done is, you can see the material they used, which was basically a C channel. You can see where it's rotted all the way through. And it's broken axle here. So what we've done is we made this. This is the brand new one that we just built. All we have to do is put our vapor barrier on the top, we'll lift up the trailer, we'll load it up underneath, and redrill the holes and fix some of the aluminum on the trailer, and this one will be ready to go. You see what we did on this one? We actually went ahead and made this out of square steel tubing instead of a C channel. So it's a lot stronger and a lot more durable. So if you have any questions or comments or you run into this issue, now you got an idea of what it's going to take to go ahead and repair it.